Hi, this is Klaus Hermann from farbspielphoto.com and in this episode of Hands-on Photo Tips I'm going to show you how to remove halos from your HDR images. Halos are well-known HDR artifacts where you get a bright glow around the objects in your images. This can be very ugly and distracting and I'm going to show you how to fix this in Photoshop. So here we are in Photomatics with our sample image already open. I've already merged this image from three source photos and now we're here in the tone mapping module. And you see I've, that I've chosen this kind of grungy looking preset which is quite extreme. And this is just for the purpose of demonstrating how to remove the halos. You see that we've got some quite pronounced halos here around these darker edges. Um, and something that you may want to think about if you tone map um, uh, an image is how to avoid halos in the first place. Now I'm going to show you how to remove the halos, but there are some things that you can do to really avoid them and also to um, save some time and effort. To avoid these halos, there are actually two things you can do in this parameter panel at the left here. The first thing is you could reduce the strength setting to a value of let's say 85 and you see that you already get a much more natural looking image overall with the sky being much brighter and the building being much darker um, but more importantly you have to look at this lighting adjustment setting down here and you see that I've uh, chosen this legacy lighting effect checkbox um, which was common in older versions of uh, Photomatix Pro. And you see that I've chosen the Surreal preset here, which is the reason for this grungy look we've get, we are getting. Now, I would uncheck this box so that we get this um, new lighting adjustment slider. And I would choose a setting somewhere between 1 and 4. That's usually the range that I'm using for my images. And you see that it's, the image has been getting much more natural and uh, we've got a brighter sky, we've got a more uh, a darker building here at the bottom and there are much less or even no halos at all in this version. Okay, so but this tutorial is really for the purpose of demonstrating how to remove halos. So let me just quickly reset this to the previous settings. We've got this grungy looking image again and now I'm going to turn over to Photoshop and show you how to remove this. I've tone mapped the image now in Photomatics and I've loaded it into Photoshop CS6. So you see the same image with the same grungy look and the same halos here around this edge of the roof. And um, before I'm going to show you um, how to actually remove those halos, let me show you the before and after. So this is the image with the halos and after we've, we're done with our um, halo removal magic the image is going to look like this. So you see that these halo regions around the roof suddenly disappeared. This is the before, this is the after, before, after. So how do we actually do this? The whole magic is hidden here in this group and um, in a minute I'm going to show you how to do this and how to create this um, um, halo removal effect. But let me just quickly um, tell you how it's done in principle so that you can follow the tutorial. So the whole magic is really just this single adjustment layer here. You can forget about this layer, it has no effect on the image. This is a levels adjustment layer and you see that all I did here was to um, reduce the mid-tone brightness from the standard value of 1.0 to a value of, of 0.7.5 around that mark. Now that's not some magic number um, that will change from image to image so you have to really um, check out which number is best for you. For this image it turned out that 0 0.75, 0 0.74 that's okay. Now the effect of this um, reduced mid-tone brightness is actually that the whole image is getting darker. And I can show you this by switching off this layer mask that I'm getting to in a minute. So you can see this is the effect of the levels adjustment layer if we didn't have 
a layers mask on this adjustment layer. Let me turn that back on. And the idea here is that this darkening effect is masked. And this mask, I can show you this mask by holding down the Option key or the Alt key on Windows and clicking on this mask. And you see that the whole idea is that this darkening effect is blended into the image with a mask that reveals this adjustment layer at exactly the same spots where the halos are. So that's, a, that's what we essentially do to remove the halos. Now the nice thing about this technique is obviously that it's non-destructive. So um, you could actually turn on and off this layer just as I did to show you the before and after. And I didn't touch any of the pixels of the original image, so I didn't change the image. I just added an adjustment layer on top of that, which solved the problem. And that's also, always the best way to go about editing your images. Do it non-destructively if you can. Okay, so, but how do we actually do this now? Let me just quickly remove this group here in order to show you how it's done. I'm creating a copy of the background layer by hitting Ctrl J on the keyboard. And the first thing that we need to do is to, we need to create a selection of the building. Um, now you've seen that the mask had a very um, harsh edge at the bottom where the building is and it was very smooth towards the sky. So we need to select the building in order to, um, to create this effect. Let me zoom in here so that we see what we're actually doing. And to select the building, I choose the quick selection tool. And I'm making the selection tip a bit smaller here. And I'm just brushing over the areas where the building is. And you see that a selection is created and this selection snaps to the edges of this building. So the quick selection tool is intelligent enough to know where the parts are that we're trying to select and it helps us in doing so. We need to refine this a little bit here. Um, just reduce the um, tip of this selection tool and you see this little plus sign in the selection cursor and that means wherever we're going to click this is going to be added to the current selection. Let me just add some refinements here, make the tip even smaller and then go into this area here where these golden parts are. We need to expand the selection here also. I'm just doing this very coarsely, so I'm not, this is not a very refined edge, because in the next step, we're going to refine it even more. Even more. Okay, that looks, looks good to me. The next thing that we're doing is we're turning this selection into a mask. So you just click on this Create Mask or Add Vector Mask button down here in the Layers panel, and you get this mask. And from now on, we're working on, that, on this mask. And the most important thing that we need to do is to re we need to refine the edges of that mask. And you, if you see, if, when I push this Mask Edge button here in the Properties panel that appears as soon as I select the mask, I get this dialog box here. and in order to refine the edges, you see that this is not a very exact mask or selection here. In order to, to refine these edges, I'm going to this tool here and choose Refine Radius Tool. And I'm painting with this tool in the areas where I like to tell Photoshop that this is not, it didn't do a perfect job. And you see, as soon as I let go of the, um, of the brush tool, the selection really gets refined. So I'm just applying this refinement to the edges of this mask and you see that Photoshop is really doing a great job of understanding what I wanted to select in the first place. Just going around the image, so you see also here we've got 
parts of the sky being selected and that was not what we wanted. And this is really a great tool where you can refine your masks very quickly and very intelligently. So if you were, if you were to do this um, and make it perfect, you would go all around the building and refine these edges. For the purpose of this tutorial, I think it's, it's good enough now. And um, what we've created now, let me just zoom out here a little bit. What we've created now is essentially a mask that only reveals the building. The next thing that you need to do now is to create your levels layer. Let me just return to the normal display here. I'm going to the adjustments panel up here. And I'm simply creating a new levels layer, just as you saw the one that I showed you before. And I'm just dialing in um, a darker mid-tone value here. Now you can adjust this whenever you like, so you don't need to decide now what the right value would be, but it certainly had to, has to be darker. Um, the next thing is that you, you see this white layer mask here, which reveals the entire levels layer. Um, and I'm going to, to invert that, make it black by pressing Control I, Command I on the keyboard. And now I'm going to select, to make a selection from this mask that we've created before. I just hold down my Control key and I click on that mask and you see our building is selected here based on the mask that we've created. And I'm going to invert this selection. So go to the select menu and choose inverse. And the result is that now the sky and the surrounding area around the building is selected. And this is the basis on which we can now draw this mask that you've seen, which only reveals the parts of the halos. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. And I'm going to Alt or Option click on that mask, so you see the black layer mask with the selection. And I'm choosing the brush tool with, in this case, um, a brush tip of, let's say, about 300 pixels. And I'm pressing the X key to make the foreground color white. Now, I need, before I'm going to brush, I need to set the flow value to 100%. Um, and now I'm just going to brush with this white brush gently along the edges of our selection that we've created. So you see that I'm staying inside the building and just brushing along this, this edge. And this creates a smooth transition, a white area around the building with a smooth transition which almost looks like the original halo and that's that's really what we're trying to do here to reveal only those parts of the levels adjustment layer that are just above the halos that were created by the tone mapping. So I'm brushing along this edge you see that it's solid white just outside the edge of the of the building with a smooth transition and um, the next thing that we're doing is I'm going to apply a uh, Gaussian blur filter here to make this um, mask a bit smoother. So you see with a value of let's say 45 something this mask is blurred and gets a bit smoother and now I'm going to brush along this edge again. So the, the goal here is to create a really nice smooth transition between the, uh, the roof edge 
and the sky where the halo is. Okay, it should be should be really solid white right at the edge of this roof. And this should do the job. Okay, so let's see how we're doing here. I'm just turning off that mask view. And you see, if I turn off that layer, you see the halo appears again, and if I turn it on, it disappears. So we're pretty good. We did a pretty good job. Now you could of course now um, refine this. I would suggest that you reduce the flow value here in the menu bar um, to really apply only a very little white color here. And in those areas where you have the impression that there's still some haloing going on, you can go over it very gently and you can bring some of this darkening effect into these areas. Okay, so that's it. Let me turn off the selection. We've created a levels adjustment layer with a darker mid-tone range and we've created a mask that puts this darkening effect right into these areas where the halos are. And this finishes our tutorial on halo removal. I hope you found it useful. Bye bye and see you next time.